From the dawn of man, some were fit to rule. Some progressed our society into new frontiers of technology and medicine. And others were the village idiot. Well, most probably were, actually, now that I think about it. For most of human existence, however, you could only see these types of people if they lived by you, at the carnival's freak show, or with Bob Saget on America's Funniest Home Videos. With this, however, it would appear we only scratched the surface of what we as humans were capable of accomplishing when we really didn't use our minds all that well. At the turn of the millennia, all that would change with the internet, the World Wide Web, and especially a video uploading site called YouTube. Here, users could post videos of whatever they wanted, many not realizing of how stupid or insane they looked exercising this great new power they had. No one could ever imagine how many crazy people could possibly think sharing their views or insane ramblings on a public forum would be a good idea, but it was happening. In a time where people trusted the crazy homeless man on the side of the street more than the news media, a new kind of show would step forward to both cover the news and showcase the craziest people the World Wide Web would have to offer, and their name. The Drunken Peasants Podcast. This alt-right, redneck, doobie-smoking podcast would forever change the internet, one episode at a time. After the fall of the Soviet Union and communism, a man known as Neb would convert to capitalism, changing his name to Ben, and begin to brew the greatest idea for a podcast besides the Joe Rogan show, perhaps. He loved listening to political podcasts at the time and wanted to start his very own. Ben was a super genius and knew an easy way to grow the podcast audience was to grab an already popular YouTube star to co-host. The amazing atheist, T.J. Kirk, had a very successful YouTube channel going at the time, calling out the crazy religious people for the most part online and other dumb events going on in the world. After Ben bugged him for a year to do a podcast with him, the two would finally join forces and air their first joint show. On January 3rd, 2014, the year would start out with a bang as the two released the first episode of the No Bullshit Podcast offering opinions of the news from an altered perspective. An audio-only show at this point, the show would change quite a bit from this episode, including a name change, two things stuck around with the show's run. The first was the pan meme, referring to the hippie drug marijuana, which would eventually be used in the first and official Drunken Peasants t-shirt. The second was a quote that would be featured in the intro for many episodes to come. I don't have facts to back this up. The show would return on January 5th as the Drunken Peasants Podcast. Hello! I feel, I feel so uh, dignified being a host. Yes. We are your hosts, Ben and TJ. I'm Ben. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, he is. He is Ben. I, I'm Early Drunken Peasants had a focus really on covering the news, as there was plenty of bullshit to talk about. Already by episode two, a new voice would join the show, TJ's brother, introduced as a sober noble. Welcome to the Drunken Peasants Podcast. This is Ben here with TJ. Also in the studio today we have Scotty. Yeah, he's not a drunken peasant though. He's a, a sober noble. Yes, sober noble. He would appear on the show quite a bit. The Drunken Peasants were joined by many guests, mainly from the YouTube atheist community in early episodes of this show. Guests would be such as Jacqueline Glenn, Cult of Dusty, The Bible Reloaded, and on episode 17, Paul's Ego. 
The show would have its largest panel of guests after the appearance of Paul, in which a bunch of Christians would call into the show after the show had problems starting, looking to ask some questions and debate the existence of God. However, they were still able to pwn these God-believers and their terrible arguments. While these arguments were unremarkable, two of these members are very much worth noting, as they would become important opponents to the peasants for many episodes to come. And they were G-Man and Brett Keen. Brett Keen was leader of this posse, and he was extremely polite to the peasants who berated him throughout the debate. Sure, but yeah. I mean, ev everyone's corrupt. I mean, if you think you're not corrupt, you're fucking kill. You're, I mean, especially you, you're fucking kidding yourself. <laughs> Guys, is there really any necessity to get all? No, but it's fun as fuck. Oh, that that's right. I'm yeah, not going to attack you or do anything like that. I'm talking. You have attacked me plenty of times in the past. You've made tons of false accusations accusations against me. You've basically made videos that are giant conspiracy theories that I destroyed your channel and your career on YouTube when actually I helped you far longer than most people did. However, Brett Keen did have quite the history on YouTube beforehand. He was in fact credited by TJ as inspiring him to join the YouTube community as the Amazing Atheist as during the early days of YouTube, Brett was a popular YouTube atheist, making videos against the great bearded man's existence. For some people, they say, he liked to kill people. He liked to hurt things. We're going to find out just in case I bring my, my little friend with me. However, Brett stirred up a good deal of drama within the atheist community, betraying many people he called friends, and running many scams and scandals during his time on YouTube. Brett breaking many of the community rules on the site over time would force him to create many YouTube channels. Brett would create many videos, and constantly be known for deleting videos that could possibly be used against him in the future. Okay, we'll go with Coughlin 000. Or right, what do you think? Let me see. Hmm, maybe 616. We'll do 616 right afterwards after I report every goddamn video on the channel. After I report every goddamn video on the channel. After his falling out with the YouTube atheist community, he resorted to begging on the internet for money, and Christians would end up falling for his scams. Thus, Brett would convert to becoming a God believer. Paul's ego would study this matinee as he would come to be known on the drunken peasants by following the actions and history of the man. He would be able to easily predict Brett's future actions to come. Once he learned Brett was in this so-called religion debate, he made sure to come on and oppose him in his silly act. One of the Keen's minions during this event was a man known as G-Man, being the first to bring diversity and race to the drunken peasant show. During this debate, he had some of the worst arguments these Christians had to make besides probably true empiricism, who was eventually kicked out of the call for being one of the most annoying motherfuckers on the planet. Uh, That's right. Let me... You guys, man. So what we hey. take from this is that the amazing atheist doesn't even know anything about anything. He's, a, he's an ignorant, disrespectful jerk, and he, has, he, he doesn't have an, any and substance or background at all to tell anybody anything about the existence of God because he himself has demonstrated he doesn't have a clue what he's talking about. I'm sorry, I just dozed off there. What'd you say? <laughs> okay, may, may I ask DJ a question here? Can you, can you kick true empiricism out of this fucking room, please? G-Man also accused one peasant of being a racist. Yeah, why do you use that word so much? I, I, wait, wait, wait a minute. I why use, do you use that word so much? Which word are you talking That's about, it, TJ? What is wrong with you? The word nigger. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you broke up a little bit. Which word? Nigger. Oh, okay. Oh, that, okay, nigger. Got nigger. It. That's the yeah, one. So, so atheists are racist, right? No, I'm not racist at all. You represent all atheists on YouTube, so I mean. I'm not, but I'm not racist. Honestly, don't lie to him. We're all completely and utterly racist. In fact, Christians in America don't have the fucking market cornered on racism. It's atheists. Yeah. Well, it's definitely atheist. It's, it's only definitely atheist. On YouTube, and I'm You're right, enough, dude. You go down on YouTube using the N-word over down and over and over. And his name is hey, the amazing G -Man. one. You go down the south. amazing atheist. You go down south. The amazing racist. Find. Let me ask you a question. The amazing racist. While G-Man was defeated in this debate, 
in his own little world, he thought he won. And perhaps maybe he did. He would continue to show up on the drunken peasants from time to time in the future. Between the first and second religion debate, the peasants would cover one of G-Man's infamous raps. He actually has it right. Until someone can prove that God is not real, atheists like Redline tell me how torment feels. Atheists take this advice for the rest of your days. Read your Bible and do what it says. Atheists own. On April 5th, 2014, the second religion debate was held. G-Man still had his terrible arguments. Billions yeah, of years. But the, what the theory of evolution explains is a dog becoming a dog and a, and a bird becoming a bird and just oh. becoming a different kind of a bird. But we don't never see these the, these uh, the, these birds becoming something that's not a bird. So can you explain to no. me why a coyote and, and a uh, domesticated dog could interbreed, but a fox couldn't interbreed with, with a domesticated I'll dog? Say, well, I don't know about interbreeding, but well, but that's that's part of what evolution is. Because in order to evolve, to you have to be able to reproduce. Okay, but when when a canine uh, uh, has sex with another canine, they produce another canine. Right. It never becomes annoying. A coyote is not a canine. And, and there's the problem with that you see macro evolution claims that you know uh, um, that, that that you can go from one kind to another kind, and we don't see any proof of that. Another Christian dumbass rambled on during the debate. Nephilim free. Ne Nephilim free. Are you going to continue to filibuster for the next like two fucking no, I hours? Just want a straight answer. That's all. I, I gave you answer. a straight answer. It's oh, fucking I, wrong I, to kill a person. And I said, why? Is it wrong just because, or is it wrong for a reason? Is there anything that is just because? It's wrong because we live in a society. We've entered in a contract of governance with one another, and we have decided as a society that it is important to us to not impose our will on another person in such right, a way that would deprive that the them of life. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> government it would deprive do it all the them time. of. You, you've been asking me for an answer, and I'm giving you your stupid fucking answer. After an hour, technical difficulties forced the debate to come to an end. In the episode following the debate, G-Man would claim to become an atheist, but it was all a scam, as he became known as the Chocolate Atheist. Taking this name, even as a joke, pissed off many other Christians in the community, and they all had their arguments in a Google Hangout. There are other ways that we can, we can reach the lost. There are, are better ways than to deceive, than to... Why don't you just admit deny, that you were thoroughly entertained and that, and that you love what I did? Well, why, why don't you just admit that? <laughs> the response. I like that. Uh, an apology. We're supposed to be given to God as chaste virgins, painted white. <laughs> 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 and he said he was the chocolate atheist. <laughs> painted white. White, the color of God. The white Unlike black, the color of evil. We have to pause and give ourselves a chance. <laughs> <laughs> this is you get it. You just need to be a And you do it, of all days, you do it on the day that a bunch of children in the, in the United States are participating in a pagan ritual rolling eggs around. You do it on that day? The day the bunny lays eggs? Come on, motherfucker. It's wrong. The majority of this episode, however, was spent discussing the fall of Brett Keane after he pissed off the peasants in one of his latest video uploads. Today, we have we, we're gonna we're gonna put a nail in the in the Brett Keane saga coffin. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> all good things have to end. For all all good things must end for like the fifteenth time. Exactly. Right. However, they were far from over dealing with this individual. Drunken peasants continued on, leaving Brett behind for a short time, and continued their course forward. On episode 25, a new peasant would be revealed, Scotty Cena. We got, ben a, we got ben a present. We should show everyone Ben's present. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> Hand us your present, Ben. Yeah, this is Ben's, what's one of Ben's presents. This is, this is Ben's best, this is, uh... Yeah! John fucking Cena. <laughs> Dude, make the... <laughs> Every poll conducted of the fans have universally said that Scotty Cena is the best drunken peasants host. Commonly, he would star when TJ's brother would be away in Canada. 
Drunken peasants would still cover the news greatly, but as time went on, they would continue to delve into the depths of YouTube to find more crazy people such as Brett Keane. More antagonists would begin to challenge the peasants and step up to the plate, all mostly striking out. On episode 27, the peasants would begin to cover the vigilant Christian Mario. This is going to be fun. This is Family Guy Exposed, TV's most satanic and anti-Christian uh, show. Um, this is by a YouTuber by the name of the Vigilant Christian, I believe. Um, nine months ago, the Vigilant Christian abandoned his channel because he talked to God and God told him that, you know, making YouTube videos is not his destiny at this time. <laughs> Mario is an Illuminati conspiracy theorist, commonly crying for forgiveness in his videos for doing drugs and praying God will help him. He will accuse anything of being satanic from yoga Pokemon cards, and Beyonce. Early on in the coverage of Mario, he would attack the peasants, stating, as any good Christian would, that he got more pussy than the peasants while in school. Oh, I, I used to be like this guy. That's the thing. Oh. You know, I know oh. where he is. There's something hurt inside of him. He's broken. You're you know, broken, If TJ. you really look at this guy in <laughs> high school, he probably had it rough. He was made fun of probably by guys like me. I was muscular. I had Wait, all the girls. Hold was... on. So he basically admits that he was a fucking bully. Yes. That like basically. picked on people. No, no, guess what? I'm fucking six foot seven and I'm huge. Please come no and No one. Try... No one fucking had the balls to make fun of me, okay? Please come and not and only try that, to pick I was a TJ. fucking lunatic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. come here. Well, let yeah, me show Mario, you. come here. You come here. I'll tell you what, Mario, you with all your muscles, come try to fucking fight me. We have is something true. Truly wonderful. This is our uh, YouTube crazy segment that we've been uh, having pretty much every week now. Uh, this is a video made by a YouTube user. I, I don't even think we're going to say his name. He believes that we are cloning people from the past and making their clones the leaders of today. Sounds reasonable. Yeah, yeah, I can get behind that. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. Hello everybody, this is Evan LeFevre here with the breaking news video. Evan LeFevre would appear on episode 28, and while the peasants treated him as another crazy man at first, they would eventually come to his side and convert to Evanism, and becoming friends with the man claiming to be the biological father of Jesus Christ. Oh, um, Evan LeFevre, uh, how's it going? It's going good, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, sweet, awesome. It's going good. It's an honor to be on your guys' show at I long last. can taste you as well. <laughs> so, are, you're the biological father of Jesus Christ. That's true, yes. So, and it's not are, easy. You, are you God? Well, um, <laughs> well, see, my son Jesus and I do not like the G word. We don't oh. like the God word because monotheism is a lie, and the God word it implies superiority. Jesus Do you guys like Christ to smoke I... weed together? Do you ever smoke weed with Jesus? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, that's As pretty sweet. Fact, um, you know, I'm sorry to hear about you guys not voting legal weed in. What yeah, a bummer. Yeah. It is a shame. That is a real bummer, See, man. When, when I become king of planet Earth, the first king of planet Earth, I am going to legalize weed on both a recreational and a medicinal level. The next antagonist to step up to the plate was Ryan Whiney. I mean, Wiley. <laughs> anyway, here's this faggot. Yeah, uh, I believe his name is Ryan Wiley. I, I could be mispronouncing his last name. Um, and he... Uh, Grindin' Willie. He believes name. that popular atheists on YouTube are not being properly held accountable for what they say. But he's going to do the job. Yeah. He's dressed for business. Yeah, and atheism. actually I need to start it from the beginning. I right. criticize popular atheists frequently because I He lives in Michigan too, apparently. Yes, yeah, so you guys should go beat his ass. Yeah, I I think he goes to U of M, so go down to Ann Arbor and, you know. Actually no. We don't condone that. <laughs> <laughs> Officially, Wink. I believe that when you have power and when you have popularity, you should be able to represent the movement well. I'll tell you one thing: if you want to be the one that represents them, you got to get better audio for one thing. Yeah. Now, before the viewer here claims it is because Ryan didn't get any views himself, let's take a look at his recent video views so we can put that one to rest once and oh. Anyway, Ryan would commonly argue on Twitter with the peasants, as clearly. 
the amount of characters was perfect to debate hard issues with others. Ryan, though, was far from the most interesting antagonist from this time. Even Brett, at least, while he was a bigger piece of shit, could hold your interest for a greater period of time. Ryan would get some balls to get off of Twitter and come on the peasants for once to debate Jacqueline Glenn. Here he comes. Here he comes. In our asses. Oh my god. Is he on? Ryan? Yep. Yes, I'm here. There you Hello. are. Holy shit. Yay. It's a miracle. Can I, can I have a chance to It's explain, a like, miracle. Why I don't, like, G-Man also made a quick appearance, as he did quite a bit when other atheist guests were on the show, as the peasants were quite excited to show off this rapper's skills of debate and religious ideas as they had come to accept that he clearly was the winner of the drunken peasants' religion debate. Tim Black, known as Tim the Bartender during this time, would make a video against TJ. Oh, it's a black guy. You guys made it back. Congratulations. Brutally, Welcome and his name is Black. Honest. That's double oh black. God, that and I, first thing I said to myself is, who the fuck is this guy talking to? <laughs> Who's this guy giving advice to? Okay, pause They're it. Really I'm giving, I don't know, this, it might, I don't know how it's not clear from the title, but I was giving advice to people who are atheists, but have not yet admitted it to their friends and family. <laughs> That's who I was talking to. I would think it would be obvious from the title alone, but apparently it's not. It During their fight back and forth over YouTube, Tim would utter the quote many DP fans would come to know. Uh, scratching scratching like my a, belly and my know. dick, you know, it got in the way. It just got in the way. And um, I think I'm the spiritual heir to Diogenes. So I think that that's where that's coming from. It's a tradition of sexual perversion that reaches back through the ages. What the fuck are you talking about, atheist? <laughs> <laughs> I pity the fool. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, I gotta, that's gotta be, if I ever do like another intro or outro, I gotta put that in there. Tim has not appeared on the Drunken Peasants for some time in person, but this quote was used in the intro for many episodes to come. It did become clear that Tim was just over-exaggerating the argument for fun, much like a wrestling match, and he would appear as a guest on episode 37. Tim the bartender coming on the Drunken Peasants show. Hey. hey! Hey! Hey, what's up, fellas? Nothing Fuck much, them. Tim. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm excellent. What's up, atheist? Oh, nothing much. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see you, Tim. I mean, after all this time, you know, we've done three videos talking about you, and now we finally got you here. So, hey, Ben, you had, you had some kind of really racist question to ask him, didn't you? No, you did. <laughs> no, no, no. You had, a, you had some really racist question, I think. What was it? Tim would give the peasants a black card as well. They again would have a falling out over some disagreements over the Chapel Hill shooting. But they would resolve this disagreement and return to being friends. Tim, while only appearing three times on Drunken Peasants in person, continues his career on YouTube, mainly discussing politics from a progressive viewpoint. However, he hasn't forgotten the peasants, as even when he appeared on Dr. Phil, he would give a wink and a nod to the peasants' fan base. Tim, let me start with you. Have you heard anything today that changes your thoughts or opinions about this? I mean, it does, Dr. Phil, but the way I look at it, it's... What you talking about, Shanisha? On episode 36, before the appearance of Tim Black, DP wanted to explore the artistic creativity of their audience, as they had already seen the autistic capability through the stream's live chat. They began this when TJ issued the Draw Paul Ugly contest. Yes. <laughs> I, have, <clears throat> I have a quick question about the fan art. Yeah. Why do I look like a fucking bullfrog in every... <laughs> like, I look awful. Like, <laughs> I know, I, look, I, I realize I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but Jesus Christ, cut me a little slack, people. Fan art people. You make me like so slight, slightly charming and handsome, you know. Once. No, Jesus you gotta shit. be a fat tub of shit every time. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm a, I, I want shit just because you said that. Like, I want. I want. I'm announcing the disgusting Paul's ego fan art contest. <laughs> Wow. I will give a $25 Amazon gift card. Really? Wow. To whoever draws the most disgusting picture of Paul's ego and sends it in to the drunken peasants on our Facebook. Yes. Oh my god. Contests would follow, such as Draw TJ and Tim Black Fucking, and the Draw Ben contest.
after the Draw Ben contest, in which fans had to guess what Ben looked like as he had never appeared on camera during the run of the Drunken Peasants, the Peasants would start the greatest running joke the podcast would ever see. Hey, Scotty. Hey, Scotty. How could you be so fucking stupid? During the show, these quick clips of a crappy Christian show edited with jokes mainly directed at TJ's brother were played. The fans had a blast creating these videos, and TJ and Ben loved playing them. Sadly, TJ's brother killed the fun, only allowing the funny ones to be played, and eventually they were no longer played as the Cristiano brothers who originated the show apparently never had heard of fair use and began making copyright claims on videos using their clips something the Bible Reloaded would take on and challenge them on. Hey, Scotty. Die! Die of every disease known to man at once, you stupid bastard! Blah! Ben had not appeared on camera. He was a smart capitalist, as mentioned before, and would use this to his advantage. So on episode 42, in an attempt to promote Audible, the peasants said if 30 people signed up for Audible trials, Ben would appear on camera. As you can see here, Ben did appear on camera, but still hit his face. It is unclear exactly why he hit his face during this episode. Was he a wanted man from his communist days? Did he want privacy? Or was there a terrible accident scarring Ben's face? What, is the, what are the comments? <laughs> I don't know, let me see. I can't see them yet. TJ can read them. Uh, ben has a mask on. Exclamation points. Fuck. <laughs> ben, TJ. Ben, Anna. Ben, 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 Ben. Ben, take your mask off. No pussy. fucking way. I said I was going to be on camera. Yeah, he never said that you would see his face. Even at a wrestling event where the peasants would appear on camera in the background, Ben continued to hide his face. The only glimpse many would get for a while of Ben's face was a quick mishap where Ben would change cameras accidentally, while his mask was not clearly on. Peasant fans would quickly rejoice at the beauty, saving the image and spreading it for all to see. Episode 43 would star a debate between G-Man and Dusty Smith, thus leading to the greatest victory G-Man would ever have against the peasants, where he would demand for the peasants to show him that there was a starving child. I don't have anything to do with it. If God is helping you, why does it help these star starving children? Why are you more important than How they are? How do you know are? he's not? How do you know he's not? Because they're dying. Because <laughs> they're, they're fucking starving. Yeah, they're dying. Okay. Uh, so a child starves every 10 so seconds. Someone, so show me somebody. Show me. Show me a child. You're giving me what ifs and acting as if that's true. Show me some empirical evidence it's happening right You now. are just <laughs> unbelievable. I know. That, I can't <laughs> believe this is a real conversation. I can't so believe you're dying know what he's doing. children he's starving right now in the world. So wait, hold on, G-Man. You've admitted that they're starving children, though. So you would, you, like... There are starving children in the world, right? There might be, yes. There might be, yes. There might be. <laughs> okay, well, you're fucking retarded. Hey, I don't see nobody. And we're right done here. with you for now. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> we're done. Where's Until you God. realize that there's starving there children. There are starving like, children in the world, dude. If you don't even agree on the facts of reality, how I the fuck win. can we have a conversation? Yeah, no, I you win. don't win. You, you, you lose for the 5,000th time. You lose. You lose. You lose, sir. Good day. You lose. You lose, G-Man. G-Man. I am afraid okay. that you lose. G-Man oh, literally wants us to po produce a starving child. Yeah. Yeah, like, okay, it's getting too ridiculous. Yeah, right? I, you know what? Produce I just a happen starving to have a starving orphan. Yeah, because, you know, prove if we saw children starving children, starving. We, would, we, of course, would just, like, say, keep starving so we can prove this to yeah, G-Man. just in case G-Man <laughs> asked me to present you as evidence that you exist. G-Man, skeptical of the fact that children are starving, but not of the fact that there's a magical Man and has G-Man G -Man ever watched the fucking news? Oh, G-Man, though, wouldn't go down so easily, and this wouldn't be the last time he would own while on the Drunken Peasants podcast. Uh.